Okay, hi everyone, welcome to another lecture on contracts. So today we're going to look at the different types of contracts. Let's start by uh, uh, looking at uh, fixed price contracts. Fixed price contracts are the common ones. Uh, in fixed price contracts, you have a certain price which is fixed for the good and that price does not change basically. So it's also called a lump sum contract. And uh, before we look at some variants of uh, fixed price or contracts, also in short form called FP contracts. This is very similar to the example that we looked at uh, in the last uh, video that we did, where we uh, agreed to pay a painter, say about $300 for a certain job. And uh, once the agreement is made, then after the particular painter has done the painting job, then you give him $300. And that's because it is a fixed uh, price contract. So let's look at some of the modifications or the variants of the fixed price contract. Firm fixed price contract. Firm fixed price contracts are rigid contracts where there is very little scope to change the price of the contract. I think the statement is there in the term firm that it is a very firm and very rigid contract and it puts the contractor at a high level of risk and it is normally contractors agree to such such contracts because they are very familiar with the job that they have to do so for example if you ask someone to come and uh, uh, sort of build a fence and they would be very comfortable in quoting a price and then if it is a fixed firm or firm fixed contract then they cannot change that price or okay, they cannot change the circumstances so it is very rigid and if they are very comfortable that they can achieve that then only will they agree to a very rigid uh, uh, firm fixed price contract the firm nature of the contract means that there can be no room for adjustment of the contract price. Uh, there are also adjustable fixed uh, price contracts. Uh, um, let's look at these ones. We have the uh, fixed price incentive fee. Now, in just a, just a quick recap, when you look at fixed price contracts, the contractor has to give one price and that price has to have the cost of the project and the profit included in that particular price, okay? So the buyer doesn't necessarily know what profit the contractor is, or the customer doesn't know what profit he's making. He just knows what price he has to pay, and that's it. Now, there is the fixed price incentive fee contract. So in that case, the fixed price is agreed to, but also there's a clause that states that if the contractor performs well, then they might be eligible for an extra amount of money, as an incentive fee. So if I give someone to build my house for say six months, the contract says that if you build in six months, you get the fixed price. But if you build it in five months, then what you get is an additional $3,000 because you finished it so quickly. And obviously you get to check the other quality and other things, but if the job is well done and there's performance expectations that have been met, then you obviously according, if you had signed a fixed price incentive fee contract, you give an additional bonus uh, to the contractor. Now, this co this type of contract uh, really motivates the contractors to perform better. Uh, also, there is a negative incentive uh, as well, in the sense that there can be a clause which penalizes the contractor. So, instead of finishing in, say, six months, the contractor finishes in seven months. So, you could actually penalize the contractor for, say, a rental income that you had lost for one month, which is probably you could say $300, $400, and you can penalize the contractor and deduct that from the fees of the contractor, or you could ask the contractor to pay you back. It's not very uncommon to have negative incentives in contract, as well as positive incentives. Okay, so let's look at fixed price with economic uh, adjustment. Oh, sorry, fixed price with economic price adjustment, FPCPA. So in this case, there is a fixed price agreement, but in if the product the contractor is selling or the service the contractor is selling gets externally affected, uh, then what happens is he or she, the contractor can go and say that, okay, you have to pay this amount extra because we need to adjust for the economic price uh, increase or there's an external effect that needs to be accounted for. For example, if you agree that you, I agree with the contractor that uh, they're going to supply me a newspaper for for one whole year. So, for example, I'm very old. I don't want to drive. It's like virus season. I don't want to go out. So, I'm hiring someone to deliver a newspaper for one whole year. Say, for example, if the contract is uh, uh, made 
in such a way that the price of the newspaper is about 10 cents at the time and the delivery cost is around uh, say three dollars and the total cost comes to four dollar ten cents and for the whole year of 365 days it comes to around $1,496.50. Imagine now that suddenly the newspaper that I used to read changes its price because maybe they are in a financial situation and they change it to $1.50. So according to the fixed price EPA contract, there is, the contractor has no control over the price of the newspaper. So what happens is I then have to pay extra, even though we agreed to a fixed price, but whatever is the balance extra because the the newspaper changed their price to a higher value, I then have to pay the extra because it was agreed to in the contract that any economic price adjustment can be made, uh, made to the fixed, price, the fixed price agreement. Next, we look at the set of contracts where uh, it's normally you reimburse after a job is done. So uh, in fixed price, we wait for the contractor, say, to do a certain job, and once the job is done, you pay them a fixed price. That's it. You don't care how much they have made as a profit. You don't care how much the expense is. With cost reimbursable contracts, uh, these are contracts where the agreement states that after the work is done, then the contractor gets paid for their expenses. And then an, an additional amount is paid as a fee, which is basically their profit. It's also called uh, cost plus contracts. Okay. Now, Let's look at some of the cost plus contracts. Cost plus fee, uh, this is the most common in the cost plus contract. <clears throat> so cost plus a fixed fee. Uh, this is when you agree to pay the contractor a total expense. So say for example, he does the painting. Then he, what he does is after doing the painting, he gets all the receipts to you and says, okay, painting costs the whole paint and the paintbrush and all this costs about $300. And of the $300, uh, I, this is the cost and my profit should be $20. So you pay the contractor $320. The, the example, there's another example given there, uh, the SMS example in which your painter has uh, charged a fixed fee of $300. Now the good thing with this cost plus fixed fee is you already know the fixed fee. So you're more concerned with just the expenses that is, that is the term that you don't know. Actually. So you know that the painter is going to make $300 as a bottom line, the profit for him or her. The expenses for the total paints and paintbrush, the thinner, the turpentine, all those things comes to about, say, about $1,200. Now, in total, you would be paying the painter a amount of $1,500 to honor this cost plus fixed fee contract. Okay. Fixed fee, uh, the fixed fee in the cost plus fixed fee can also be added as a percentage of the total cost as well. So, we hope in this case, you won't be having an exact idea of the amount that has to be paid as the fee. Okay, cost plus incentive fee. Okay, this is slightly risky in the sense that uh, what happens is this has an incentive fee. So the cost, the expenses are calculated for the contract. But then what you have is a way of estimating or you have a way of uh, assessing the performance of the contractor and based on that you would either give an incentive fee or you will not give an incentive fee uh, in the cost plus contract so in case the contractor cannot perform then a negative incentive applies in the sense that while the customer may uh, pay for the cost to a certain estimated extent then if the, cost, the contractor exceeds that value then the contractor is liable to pay for overruns and it does not get the incentive fee. So, for example, I uh, I ask someone to do painting and I just have $2,000 in my account. And that person went and bought unnecessary paint and unnecessary paintbrush and spilled the paint and spilled the thinner and then went and bought it again. So, the total cost came to around $6,000, which is very unnecessary. Now, according to the contract, the contractor has not performed well because They've made a lot of wasters and the cost is very high. So instead of paying them an incentive fee, I agree not to pay them anything because the cost is way beyond my uh, scope. Remember in cost plus contracts, you're not sure of the expenses initially. So having an estimate and asking your contractor to work towards an estimate target cost is very important. And if the target cost is exceeded by a contractor, then 
in these kind of contracts you have a negative incentive and if the target cost is not reached and is below then you can obviously have a, a positive incentive fee that can be applied and the cost may be shared depending on the agreement you can share the cost based on uh, how the agreement is so estimation is very critical in cost plus incentive fee contracts cost plus award fee contracts now this is very similar to cost plus incentive fee contracts in a cost plus award fee the contract the contractor is eligible to receive a base fee and an additional award fee for good performance in the project so it's very similar but in here in this case what happens is uh, the contractor will be paid all the expenses plus they will get a fee for which is their profit and plus if they do very well they will also be given an incentive fee for their excellent oh sorry uh, they will be given an award fee rather not an incentive fee so the base fee is guaranteed in most you can also have a base fee of zero and that would make it very similar to a cost plus uh, incentive uh, fee uh, contract so you could have a base fee of zero and then the contract i relies solely on the incentive to make a profit but in this contract it gives more flexibility to the contract especially if a base fee is already set so he knows he'll make a profit and uh, all he has to do is like to work harder to get a uh, uh, award fee the awards may be given at different stages of the project to promote good work uh, from the contractor. Time and material. Uh, uh, so, it's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be TNM is suited to tasks or scope which uh, cannot be clearly defined. Okay? Uh, in this case, what you do is it's more of a uh, uh, cost plus uh, contract, but this is more suited to construction industry. Uh, and it is also a mix of fixed fixed uh, price. I'll talk about that in a while. Uh, so the contractor gets paid for the time the employees spend on the job and the material that they have spent money on into the job, plus a certain markup fee as a profit. And this is a very common thing in the construction industry. Now, with the time and material contract, this differs in the sense from CP contracts is that you can have an upper cost ceiling or a upper cost limit after which the customer or the you might not pay your contractor. For example, the customer can say he or she will not pay more than 1,900 for a painting job. So if the contractor completes the job and incurs $2,000, the customer will only pay $1,900. So in this case, it is a bit mix of a fixed price contract as well as the flexibility of a uh, cost plus contract as well. So we'll stop here for today and uh, we'll look further into the legal elements of a contract in the next lecture. Any questions, please post it to the Moodle forum. Thank you very much.